some stuff to read.
Welcome back, everybody. We are AGDQ, Awesome Games Done Quick, and we're raising money for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Uh, you guys just saw Runner Guy do blindfolded child dungeons, and next up we have ZFG doing a glitch exhibition, and after that we're going to have him do 100% run of Ocarina of Time. So you got a lot to look forward to. While they're setting up, we're going to go ahead and read some donations. We have an $80 donation from the Nerd Wonder. He says, congrats on a successful blindfold dungeon run. $50 from Relic162. He says, great job with the blindfolded dungeons. $20 from Market. He says, I have to be up in five hours for work, but I had to see a blindfolded Zelda. Lack of sleep never bothered me anyways. $50 from Micro500. Thanks to everyone who made this AGDQ such a success. I'm proud to be a part of such an amazing event, and I look forward to next year. All I can think about there in the room is like, oh man, he's got like a mic and then headphones and then he's got like a head like my blindfold over that. I'm like, that's gotta be so uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, I will definitely go in the water here. We have a $50 donation from Patrick. He says, because I want us to reach one million. $200 from Jar Mustard. He says, truly an inspiring event. Thank you to the organizers, runners, and everyone else. $15 from Meow Mix Noms. He says, I have to donate after seeing Runner Guy. Incredible, seriously. All right. All right, um, I guess just start now because this is just a glitch exhibition. All right, so um, there's a lot of glitches in Ocarina of Time that, um, well, there's a lot of glitches, period. And you've probably seen tons of them in speedruns before if you've watched them before. But there's a lot of glitches that just aren't useful for speedruns, but they're still pretty um, amazing glitches. So this is going to be a demonstration of a few of um, my favorite glitches and just some really neat glitches in general. So the first thing I want to do uh, is try to get Epona in this tent. So there's this little part where you can kind of squeeze Epona inside the tent and get in. And when you're inside, you don't get on Epona because there's certain parts where Epona cannot get inside the tent. Uh, obviously, only, Epona is only supposed to be able to appear in the areas where Epona is normally supposed, to be, normally supposed to appear. And any other area, you're just not on Epona. However, because I was on Epona before, uh, the game still thinks that I need to be on Epona. So as soon as I enter an area where Epona can appear, I will immediately be on Epona. So what, I, what I'm going to do is I have Forer's Wind set in the Water Temple right now. So I'm going to warp back to uh, the Water Temple, and I'm going to exit the Water Temple. And Lake Hylia is a place where Epona can appear. So as soon as I exit uh, the Water Temple, I'm going to be on Epona. And I'm all the way up here really high and I cannot move. The opponent's just kind of stuck here sitting way over Lake Hylia. Snipe the Gwe. <laughs> I'll try. Does it even reach? I can't aim on VC. Act right both skills. <laughs> no. Alright, <laughs> next one. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so for the next one I'm going to show, uh, if you look at my arrow count while I'm on opponent, you see I have 20 arrows and it's green. That means I have full arrows. And if you played this game before and you know the arrow count, your normal maximum is supposed to be 30, and I have a maximum of 20 right now. And the reason for this, I did some glitches prior to setting this up uh, to kind of mess with my inventory. And right now I have a 30 bomb bag in my quiver slot. And the game reads this as a 20 arrow quiver. Uh, which is below the normal uh, maximum. So I want to upgrade my quiver. 20 is a little too low, so I'm going to try to win the quiver from this archery game. Don't fail. <laughs> it's VC, dude. It's hard. Yeah. yeah, VC, man. <laughs> Good luck. I'm failing. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> next try. VC, man, it's too hard. Dude. <laughs> For those that don't know, the VC aiming is much harder than N64. So you have to get 1,500 points to get the upgrade, so she's supposed to give me the upgrade now, and nothing happens, really. But uh, if I press my A button, I start opening an invisible chest, and in this chest, there's the spooky mask. <laughs> and uh, you can keep opening it repeatedly, <laughs> and you keep getting the spooky mask. Alright, so uh, that didn't work. I didn't get an extra quiver or an upgraded quiver there. So I'm going to try the archery game in Kakarika Village instead. Hopefully I'll get better results there. Alright, hopefully this guy actually gives me something nice. Alright, uh, looks like nothing happened again. He didn't give me the thing, but, uh, this time if I press A, I'll pick him up, and he has no legs, and I can just carry him around, and, uh, set him in front of the camera. <laughs> Alright, well, no luck with the quiver, oh well. Uh, let's move on to some other glitches. So there's this silver rock up here that you can only uh, lift with a silver or gold gauntlet or black gauntlet like I have. And um, I'm going to do a super slide off this rock and equip the hover boost and try to... I failed it, wow. Alright, so I'm going to try to super slide off this rock, and then equip hover boots, and I'm going to try to lift the rock, and the hover boots are going to activate, and then deactivate, and cancel the animation, <laughs> and uh, I'm sort of carrying the rock, <laughs> so I can just walk around with this, 
So here I'm going to set up the next glitch. You see there's a bunch of rain in Kakariko right now. Uh, Kakariko starts to rain after you beat the forest, fire, and water temples. And uh, there's a cool trick you can do with this rain. By entering the gate and then immediately exiting to trigger the rain, uh, when you go out to Hyrule Field, you get this green fog, and it's extremely thick, it's very hard to see, and it actually exists in every uh, outside area. So we'll go take a uh, quick trip around Hyrule, check out some pretty colors. Here is Zora's River, entirely blue. It goes a little bit away when I click spin, but that's it. Um, it also goes to complete black at night, which is going to happen very soon. Not like I can see anyway. Uh, I'm going to try to do a super slide. Oh, I got it. <laughs> Let's go check out uh, Lost Woods. It's a blindfolded run. Yeah, <laughs> it's continuing. <laughs> Also, the music keeps playing even though it's night. So, here's Lost Woods. It's very pretty. And then here is Kikiri Forest. And in Kikiri Forest, there's actually like a bunch of stuff. There's like there's a house right here that you just can't see. Like the textures just won't load for it. Alright, so, um, what? Wait. <laughs> oh, okay, for a second I thought the stones were floating. <laughs> okay. A few more left. <coughs> Alright, so on this file, I have a Deku stick on my B button, which I got through some other Ocarina of Time magic uh, I won't go into right now. But uh, I'm going to use this Deku stick and turn it into a bottle. So I'm going to do this glitch called Bottle Adventure, where if you have a bottle on your B button, uh, and you go back and forward through time, when you go forward through time, it's going to check the item that Link, that Young Link has on C right. So I'm going to put a fish on C right. Now fish is a special item that actually uh, points to a different item amount, uh, specifically your Deku Nut amount. And uh, what it's going to do is put the amount of Deku Nuts I have, the value of that, on my B button. So I have fish on uh, C right right now, and I have 13 Deku Nuts. So what this means is that when I, go, when I become adult, it's going to put an item with the value of 13 on my B button. And this item with the value of 13 is Furore's Wind. So, Furore's Wind um, is an item that normally you're only supposed to be able to use in dungeons. And by having it on B button, that, re that restriction is no longer a thing. I can use it anywhere I want. Well, almost anywhere I want now. You can use it anywhere you want with a small modification of it, but... There's some neat stuff you can do with this. First thing I want to show off is setting it here in market. So normally you have this um, fixed camera position like at the center of the market and it follows Link around the market instead. But if you set Furrow's Wind here and warp back, you can actually see what it really looks like from a normal perspective, which is this. So like you actually see everything moving past you instead. And then I can also try it out here. And here you can actually see the real 3D model of um, this alleyway here by setting Furrow's Wind. This is what it actually looks like. Alright, so that's kind of neat with Furrow's Wind, but um, there's one really neat thing that Furrow's Wind on me can do, and that is um, it gives you a lot of options for wrong warping. Now, wrong warping. Uh, actually, Cosmo, do you want to try to explain wrong warping? Yeah, so, uh... <sighs> it's, a, it's a complicated glitch. Oh, where do we begin? Yeah, wrong warping is this crazy glitch. It, uh... It tries to load a new scene, but you're actually adding additional values on top of that, and it can overflow and go to a new area. And sometimes you can access parts of the game that you're not, like, supposed to access at all. 
And uh, there's a lot of possibilities, especially with Furore's Wind. Um, basically, because Furore's Wind lets you set an entrance point, like, anywhere, uh, you can use it for, like, tons and tons of different combinations of wrong warps. And, yeah, this one, this one's pretty good. So you guys are in for a treat. Well, I have to set Furore's Wind specifically while exiting this tent. And then from here, I'm going to go to Dodongo's Cavern to actually perform the wrong warp. Yeah, so commonly we do this with uh, the end of dungeon, the blue warps. Specifically, Deku Tree, Dodongo's Cavern, and Fire Temple. And, uh... Those in particular let you get to like all sorts of places in the game with wrong warp. Uh, you can also use the blue warps at the end of other dungeons, but it only skips the cutscene. It doesn't actually trigger like a proper wrong warp. Some of that will be seen during the 100% run as well, which will be right after this. Just gonna cut in real quickly. We have a three thousand dollar donation from the Yeti. They say, "Hey, y'all, Yeti here. Thank you so, so much for all your support. We've just hit forty-five thousand dollars raised from shirt sales. Hype! I just want to give a shout out to all the fine folks at Humble Bundle. It's been a pleasure collaborating with them for the merch. Let's go to that million, guys. Wonder shot." And just as a reminder, guys, that uh, we are selling those AGDQ shirts until midnight on Sunday CST. I'm just gonna use this fish to uh, hold down the switch so I can get in the boss room quickly. So here's where the wrong warp is going to happen. I already killed King Dodongo on this file, so I don't need to do that. So I'm going to try to use Furrow's Wind as soon as I step in here. The blue warp sets the uh, this value so that it's going to kind of try to play a cutscene after you beat the dungeon. And that's kind of why you can overflow it. So, uh, <laughs> I am now in Zora's Fountain, but this isn't the normal Zora's Fountain. Uh, you might start to see a few interesting differences here. So, first of all, Jabu has some extra teeth. Um, he's a bit further back than normal. You can also see this um, pedestal right in front of Link. That's an ocarina pedestal, which is supposed to be... Uh, if you know the, the pedestals that you warp to when you play a warp song as an adult, um, I guess it's like supposed to be similar to what those are, but for child and the child dungeons. And it was never in the final game or in the normal areas in the final game, but you can see it here. Also, this cutscene takes a, kind of a long time. It's like a minute and a half of uh, just waiting here. It, it will end. It seems long, but it will end. Also, this area uh, will crash very easily. Hopefully, I can show off all the interesting stuff before it crashes. Um, but this area is very unstable. Uh, it's kind of like this unused like beta map or something. Yeah, it's like this beta scene set up with a beta ocarina pedestal, and there's two Jabus loaded, and like I think there's just a ton of actors loaded. It can really, it's really fickle. We we speculate that they actually may have probably used this to test to see how much they could put in one area before the N64 yeah. just crashed. So here's the ocarina pedestal. There's Jabu and his extra teeth. There's Tektite. That's not normally there. Um, there's a Furrow's Wind point, but that actually is back to the tent if I use it. That's not too interesting. i be very careful trying to walk away here. So um, these walls here, they kind of don't work. Yeah, it's really weird. Walk through them. Uh, let's get a close-up of Jabu here and his uh, extra fins and eyes. <laughs> and um, so it looks like there's two Jabus here. Apparently, it's more like 40. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was not um, aware of this. <laughs> yeah, which is why this area crashes so easily, because 
you know, 40 Jabus, uh, I don't think the game likes that that much. So, you can already see it lagging a bit there. Oh, there it oh, goes. <laughs> Alright. So, there wasn't too much more there, but yeah, that's it. And to round off that exhibition, we have a thousand dollar donation from Tink Tink. He says, because no one likes you, Cancer. Thanks for what you're all doing. A thousand. A thousand.